to continue District 5, uh, yeah, 5A, Class 5A. The Raiders are making their first trip to the playoffs under head coach or second-year head coach, Coach Galen Selman. And a rematch of a game from earlier this year with Lubbock Coronado that who took the win 27-7. Of course, sophomore Jay Sean Barrow made his debut in that game. That's right. And Dumas, of course, as we mentioned, getting their first golden ball, their district championship in 20 years, looking to win their first playoff game tonight in that same span. And Cooper went 6-4 and four overall in the regular season, but defeated the Demons 26-20 to in the first round of the playoffs two years ago. All right, let's kick it off at Kimbrough. Lubbock Coronado taking on Randall. Spoiler, this one's good. What First quarter. Packed house there, too. Absolutely. Coronado's Quay Gray. Back to pass. Going up for John Hernandez for the score on the opening drive. But on the next Coronado drive, Gray going to strike again. This time going up for Brian Cartwright on the slant. Going to take it in for the 35-yard score. Before we mentioned his name earlier, Jay Sean Barrow. He's going to get ready to roll in this one. This one we've already seen on our play of the week. We're going to check it out this time in real time. Taking it untouched through the gut. Easy 61 yards. He's a sophomore, folks. He's going to be around for a while. Expect a lot of those to come from the young Randall Raider there. Makes it 14-7. Now Coronado in the red zone. Gray back at it. Going to float this one up to Conright. Makes the easy grab in the quarter for his second of the night. But the Raiders going to come back in this one, not going down without a fight. And it's who else? Barrow just going to punish his way into the end zone for his second of the night. You have quite a few on there, but Coronado wins a shootout in this one, 51-35. The score is shocking after it was so close there in the first it, half. It was 37-35 for the longest time in the fourth quarter, so a very tight game. Randall put up a huge fight. That's right, and Lee Passmore now joining us on the phone from the Emerald Globe News. He was out there at Kimbrough. Lee, we, we just talked about it. Such a close game there uh, for the most part, and then you can see Coronado just really pulling away there in the second half. Can you kind of recap what happened for us? Well, that final score is a little misleading. That last touchdown Coronado got came with under a minute left on a, on a pass on a fourth down, you know, and they could have maybe run the clock at. It was, so the game was closer than the score indicates, certainly, but it was hard to think of a uh, playoff game around here that might have been more entertaining than this one, if you liked the offense in the first half. If you loved defense, it was probably one you hated because um, there wasn't a lot much in the way of stops going on that first half in particular. They talked to you about Jay Sean Barrow. He had a great game tonight, only a sophomore, really kind of threw the Raiders on his back tonight. Oh, yes, he did. Yes, he's done his most district season. He made his day varsity debut against Coronado earlier in that game. Randall lost 27-7, to I believe. In this one, he had 33 carries, 213 yards, four touchdowns. Now, he's a hoss, as the, the old football school, school of football people would like to say. Um, he showed it tonight. He, he kept them in the game. They got a, a little bit going into the passing game in the second half, too, but he was the key to them. It was his running against that incredible passing game of Coronado. And you saw why Coronado was unbeaten tonight if you, you know, paid close attention to the passing game. They just, the Raiders just had a hard time defending them. And can you just touch on a little bit on Galen Selman, obviously second year head coach, making it to the first round of the playoffs. Kind of what have you seen him as a coach here in his second season with the Raiders? <clears throat> well, I, yeah, I think he's definitely more comfortable in that role this year. They, they st showed improvement at the end of last season, his first year. Um, that sort of carried over into this year. They, they've been a program traditionally un under Brian Wood, who, under whom he was an assistant, that kind of picked the right time to pick during district play. And it kind of looked that way this year. Randall may well have been, at the end of the season, the best team in the district, just in terms of how they were playing in November. I think maybe that kind of showed itself tonight because they gave Coronado a pretty good scare for a while. They're like, <clears throat> they only trailed by two points in the fourth quarter at one point, and um, they just couldn't get over that hump against Coronado. But then again, no one else has. Coronado's 11-0 this year. All right, well, thank you so much, Lee Passmore, again, calling in from the Amarillo Globe News. We appreciate your recap. Let's keep it moving out to Lovett Cooper taking on the Dumas Demons. And Dumas going to strike first. Noah Quintanilla with a pass to Buse Swimmer. The ball is deflected into the hands of Kyle Strobo. Put the Tip Dumas drill. Yeah. Now uh, Cooper going to respond on the kickoff with a 90-yard return by Ryland Wilcox, even up the score at 7. Now Cooper back with the ball. Brendan Bell going to link up with Riley Keene to put the Pirates on top, 14-7. Now with six minutes left here in the first half, Dumas has the ball inside the red zone, and Quintanilla 
Going to call his own number, tie up the game at 14, and look at the score. What a heartbreaker. Cooper gets the one-point victory, 28-27.